Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now I've loaded up the Ashworth Overlander with pretty much everything I think I'm going to take minus my clothes. So it's quite well weighted and this is kind of my final test, the prep. I've done a few bits of the bike as well because when I set off on the world trip, just to get out of the UK to my first hotel in France is about 220 miles and most of it's on the motorway. So this is my final test before I put this bike through absolute chaos. So let's jump on the road. Let's see how this bike handles top speed now. Let's just see if it can cope with it. This adventure is supported by Ashworth Automotive in Western Supermare, the number one garage keeping you and Helminghead on the road. Well, I am really only days away from setting off on this world trip and I'm pretty sure I've pretty much packed everything now in the panniers, minus my clothes and laptop. And I've obviously got the fuel on the right side and then on the left side I've put my sort of the, what I believe are the minimum amount of tools, kit and bits that I need in there. But I will go through the full setup. And of course I've done a couple of little things since then to the bike as well. And we'll go through that. But with the weight in it, and like I said, all I've got to do is have my laptop and clothes at this point. I've got my camera kit pretty much on the bike and the stuff I'm aiming to take. So my sort of question will be now is what is going to be sort of the top speed because when I set off on Wednesday the 15th of February I will be literally on a dual carriageway so we're going to go on the same dual carriageway the opposite way but we're going to go on the dual carriageway I'm pretty much on that and then I'm on the motorways pretty much all the way to the Euro tunnel so I need to know what kind of speed I'm going to maintain because with all the extra weight on it with me on it even with my little bag and stuff on the front all the wind drag it's going to be interesting because if I'm doing it by car just the car side of things is about 169 miles definitely 69er to get to the actual Euro tunnel so that's a fair chunk of just hammering it mileage and in the car i can't believe what it says but for instance if it says three hours this is probably going to take at least another hour i reckon on top but i am going to give myself plenty of time because i'd rather get there and sit at services for you know an hour and have a cup of coffee than be putting myself i'm going to be late and anything again could happen anyway all the boring stuff so what we'll do we will jump on a dual carriageway first just do a little stretch on there and just see what this can hold up top speed ish wise um, because i can get before fully laden as an example i can get about 55 ish to 60 miles an hour no problem at all so we'll find out well here we go this is the a14 this is a dual carriageway the actual speed limit on here is 70 miles per hour let's just see with weight in it laden up how well she does and i'm not going to full throttle i'm going to take it through because i'm still trying to look after this engine after the rebuild um if i'm not just going to gun it but this will be my last chance because after this it will be being gunned the entire time so it needs to have a little bit of a thrashing but i'm going to try and build it up nice and slow right 47 see what she'll do i am at fourth gear i am on full throttle we are going slightly uphill we're hitting 53 54 i want to get in the old truck uh, behind the truck so i can tailgate it for more power here we go 56 57 57 58 59 60 well that's all right liking a bit of that now like i said i'm not going to go much faster than this i don't need to if i can keep up with this truck in front that's all I want to be able to really do is keep up with the trucks because I will just stick in the slow lane, stay behind the trucks. I won't, you know, but you know, I'm going to try and overtake them and I'll be doing a cat and mouse game down every single hill. But if I can sort of stay behind, flow like this, 169 miles, no problem. And then we go under the tunnel and then we're about an hour or so to the first hotel when we get there in France. 
I'm happy with that. 60 mile an hour, holding nicely. Perfect. Obviously, if we hit big tailwind or a big hill, that's going to decrease. We've gone through this before. I've already taken this bike all the way around the UK. So we know how it handles, but beautifully smooth. I'm happy with that. Very, very happy with that. Now, the other interesting thing is, is the handling. Now, of course, the Ashworth Automotive team, when they built the Ashworth Overlander, they've obviously really thought about it in regards to where they're going to put the weight because obviously having the panniers where they are nice and low the weight's nice and low so when i'm on handling the bike obviously is a lot more heavier but you can't tell it's there because it's so nice and low and the bike's still easily pushable and all that sort of stuff now one of the biggest things i found was when i did the uk trip was if i let go of the handlebars at all i'd get that wheel sh like shake so let's see if we still get that now ready <laughs> oh i need to get my bum in the right place ready here we go and we can do it we can do it with no wheel shaking see perfecto absolutely perfecto i have recently spoken to lee at ashworth automotive and also know that he's extremely extremely busy obviously he is the best motorcycle garage in the entire world so he's gonna be um but he really is so if you are going to get your bike booked in for a service because it's the only place i'd take my bike to um or for example if you're trying to make your bike into an overlanding beast like this as well remember to get booked in and remember it will take time to get the parts in as well i would generally recommend getting yourself booked in quickly and not leaving it until the beautiful summer months do kick in because i will be keeping lee busy as you can imagine with the phone calls the help and the support i'm going to need around this world trip but he is the man i mean this bike is perfection and it is thanks to him and it runs and sounds and everything about it is awesome so yeah get on the phone get yourself booked in before it's before you get that i can't fit you in for another six months because i've got a feeling that's what it's going to end up being he's going to have a six month backlog of work at this rate but the handling the handling on this bike what he's done with having that weight really low it handles just like it was before it had all this weight on so he's cracked that prop and i remember when you were saying to me i've done it in a way to keep everything really low so it should improve the bike and to be fair it really, really has. Beautiful at taking on bends. Well, I am generally quite happy about that because I was a little bit that I wasn't going to be able to maintain a high enough speed and playing with trucks all day is not exciting. But to be fair, it kept up the trucks and not just that it could probably overtake as well what's the most important thing so so far so good but shall we have a look at all the things that i've done the way i've packed it and just go through the bike for that final time before she sets off around the entire world okay so what a beautiful bike isn't it i mean it looks cool it looks like an overlanding beast because it is an overlanding beast but First of all, let's start with this beautiful little dry bag here. Now inside there is my first aid kit, it was very small, and also a couple of pairs of pants. So I never have to worry about running out of pants ever again. And if the worst thing happens and I have an off and I poop myself, I've got a spare pair of pants. Now I can literally just unbungee this straight off off of this and then i can get to my first aid kit so it's not buried deep down in a pannier in any way what brings me now on to the panniers now this pannier what i've done is i've put this anti-slide stuff on so by doing that means that i can put my pies or sandwiches or a french stick dangling on here and i can carry it without ruining it about it sliding down i've done that obviously on both sides and a couple of strips on the actual top as well so for instance if i take my waterproofs off and i'm absolutely sort of drenched but the sun's come out i could whack my waterproofs on here and that means that they're going to dry out and not get all my stuff in my top box wet for example or you know whatever even if my sort of pants need drying because i need to wash them i can put them under these things and dry them out in the nice beautiful sun or if i want to go skinny dipping for example and all my bike gear gets wet and i want to ride the bike naked i can put all of my bike gear so it all kind of sits there and dries out again so that now brings me on to what's inside the panniers so inside this pannier is my utility pannier and it's got quite a lot of stuff inside it 
as you can see. So let's start off with this bag. This is the important bag of chain lube. Everybody loves a good chain lube, but this is banana slip. And I kid you not, it actually has banana fragrance in it that's really cool. Now I've been using this chain lube for quite a long time. I generally think it's really, really good. This is a brand new can for the trip, so I can try to maintain the chain as much as possible. And then of course, in here we've got another litre of oil. Now in theory, this litre of oil, that's what the monkey bike holds. So with another litre of oil means that I can do an oil change at some point if I needed to or probably end up just keeping on the oil and topping up until I get Lee from Ashworth uh, Automotives comes out with me and we'll probably get the bike a once over at different parts during the trip. So next up in the pannier is of course the emergency triangle that you've got to carry. Massive tip, if anybody's got an old car in the UK, we don't have to have these, take it out of there put it in your pannier save yourself a couple of quid now what's left inside the pannier this is the bag of everything this has uh, more tie downs it has a spark plug tool a spark plug a spare oil filter punch repair kit uh, battery booster air pump as well a uh, 100 million mile an hour duct tape a little toolbox as well and I think that's everything that's in there. That's basically what this pannier is, is my maintenance stroke, get me out of jail free card bag. And this is what this pannier is. And this is where most of the weight is kept. Now on the other side, this pannier is literally going to be laptop and clothes because it's got the fuel can on it as well. It will balance out the weight between both sides. So clothes, laptop. And the back box is just going to carry my drone in, my 360 camera. Most of the cameras are going to be on the bike, but if I have to leave the bike, I'll probably stick the rest of my camera stuff in there. Then, of course, I've got my good old faithful magnetic tank bag. And inside here, I will carry my spare batteries. I will also carry my passport that will be in a food bag to keep it actually dry, as well as I will be carrying a one if not two power banks because if i have any charging problems or i'm draining the battery down from running heated gear any of that lot i can then charge my phone directly off of a power bank unplug my heated gear and give the battery a little bit of a good charge so that's pretty much the setup on the bike itself and it hopefully it'll work it's going to be minimalistic in regards to what i actually take so in regards to the clothes that i'll be taking it's going to be quite minimalistic it's going to be a normal pair of jeans it is going to be about four t-shirts my helmet head jumper and obviously some change of socks and pants one pair of thermal socks i'll be wearing when i'm riding for when it's cold of course bike kit i'll have on will be my road skin jeans because they are the best in the entire world and i need one pair of those jeans to survive the entire trip What's important to remember is that because I'm going to be doing this entire trip leg by leg, so I'll be going out for sort of between five days to a week at a time to conquer each country that I possibly can to do the entire world, is that I'll be leaving stuff with the bike because I'll be jumping onto flights with hand luggage. So I need to make sure obviously the panniers are going to be locked up, everything else, everything I take basically is going to stay. So things like bike jeans and bike jackets and stuff like that will all get locked away hopefully in the panniers and I'll have a grab on bag to take back with my laptop and cameras in and then the rest will stay with it. So when this leaves, what's going to be the weirdest feeling in the world, when the bike actually leaves the UK, it might not be back for years. It really is going to all depend on, really, really going to depend on, on which country I can reach out to people that are going to offer to store my bike. So for instance, if there's somebody in Italy that's watching this and they go, ah, when you come to Italy, and if you say you're near the Alps, uh, what I'll do is I'll store your bike for you for your in-between legs where I'll be storing it for about six weeks so I and then ideally someone not too far from an airport not that I'm asking much and then I can store my bike in Italy and then I can fly back come back and I can do the next leg of the journey so every country I'm gonna have to reach out to to find somebody or a garage or a dealership that'll be willing to store my bike for me for when I fly out and fly back if you get what I'm trying to say, that's currently my plan. So of course this first leg is going to be France. I'm going to ride the entire length of France. And that is going to be basically about a thousand miles across. But I might not go straight across. 
let me explain because i don't want to have a plan and i haven't really got a proper plan i've got an idea and my idea of it is obviously is to get to that first hotel somewhere near a beach or at least the coast and get some cinematic footage for day two of the trip and then i'm thinking of heading down to the normandy beaches where obviously second world war so much history and stuff there but I don't know if I'd do it enough justice because I can't joke or mess around about something like that, but there is so much history. But if I do do that, I already detour off compared, you know, for the actual direction I need to go. So I'm partly thinking I'm going to hammer down some big miles on day two as well. And then once I'm getting closer and closer to the Pyrenees where the bike's going to be stored, where I'll be stored at my dad's house, I can then venture off and try and find some stuff more down the south side of France. We will see. I'm not going towards Paris whatsoever at all. I am going to I am going to go the opposite way, sort of round and then down because I don't want to get stuck in all the craziness of Paris. I want to find some hidden gems in France is what I really want to do as I venture through. But I have about a thousand miles to do in five days. What is not difficult, I can do 250 miles on that, but plus filming as well will make it a little bit more interesting. Anyway, let me just show you something else I've done to the bike. So some of you might have noticed this and go, what is that? Well, that is a splash cover that goes over the air filter. So that's a new air filter I've put on as well. And what this is, it's got some very small holes just here, as you can see. So air will pass through and it will come out the back but just to try to protect it a little bit more, anything obviously water that's coming down isn't gonna get into the air, fill, air filter as such. And I'm thinking if I'm gonna go through rivers and things like this, cause I'm not planning on just riding on roads for my entire trip. I wanna go and do some craziness. This is gonna protect a little bit more. For the people that say, well, why not put the original air filter on? I just don't like it. For my taste, I don't like it. I think this looks really cool. And let's be quite frank, I've done seven and a half thousand miles with this kind of setup without the splash waterproof on it. So I reckon I can do seven and a half thousand more. And like I said, Lee from Ashworth Automotive is supporting me, backing me up on this entire adventure. If we've got to get a new engine and put it in, then that's what we've got to do. But how cool, how cool is the monkey cycle overlanding beast? It's ready to conquer the world and it's going to be really, really good. Every day I see miserable people Doing things they hate just to fit in I know it's easier to get along peacefully But have you ever thought about it? I am proper, proper excited to start this adventure. I am literally counting down the days and within a few days, I'll be off. And it's gonna be weird. It's gonna be a little bit strange because I've done so much on this bike and I put it through so much and I've done the whole of the UK. I don't think there's much more I could do here. And it's time. It's the time for me to take on the abroad, do you know what I mean? And do France, Italy, trying it to, to Morocco you know, go to Gibraltar with monkeys, with the monkey, all of it. Just try and do as much of the entire world as I possibly can. And um, it is the right time, but it's weird because I love, I love this country. I love living here. I love being British, but it's time to go abroad and it's time to go absolutely epic and crazy. Now, of course, like I've said before, I'll be doing this in stints and my plan is to do it like any peasant could do it, to be quite frank, because it has to be something where I can fly out, I can do a leg of it, I can fly back, I can earn some more money for, like I said, roughly five to six weeks, fly back out and do the next leg. 
and hopefully inspire people to be to start doing the same start taking on the well start conquering countries and realize that you don't just have to give up your entire life quit your job run away from your family not talk to anybody and just head off on your bike forever by yourself you can do it bit by bit by bit and you can experience it and discover it in a really incredible way that we can all do by working hard putting some money aside and taking on the next leg and on all that basis i always have to say this because i am massively humbled by it because the numbers keep growing on the patron side of things on the channel members thank you because you're helping me make this happen and it's incredible and your support is absolutely awesome so thank you and just check out all those names because they're the people that are helping me make this happen as well so thank you right it's the final little ride on the monkey bike now that final little thing in this country i am going to ride home i'm going to fill it up i'm going to do the final bit of packing and we're going to head off the weld the weld on ashworth the overlanding honda monkey country sucking beast this is it we're going to do it and we're going to do it together. Yeah.